All right, so we're going to talk about adding textures and overlays to our um, photos. So right now I have my lovely um, flower, which is right now accidentally cropped, so it is right in the middle. So I'm going to recrop this. I just brought it in straight up, it, not from Lightroom. It is just really just straight raw. It is There is no edit to it whatsoever. Um, originally I had showed you that I had done it horizontally, I changed it, now I'm going to do it vertical. So anyway, now what we need to do is we need to make this look more interesting. We're going to add textures and overlays to it. So you have downloaded some textures and overlays, they're okay. Um, you can use those if you want to, you do not have to. I have also downloaded extra ones, they're right here. Um, I downloaded some from the coffee shop blog and I downloaded one from Flickr. So I am going to go in and I am going to find in my downloads, which I have a lot of things that are downloaded, so don't judge. Um, I am going to find those overlays. I'm going to use 13 like I did yesterday. It, now, these aren't the best overlays for these assignment, this assignment just because... There is so much white. Now remember, if I don't hold shift, it doesn't constrain, or it constrains. If I hold shift, it does not. So I can stretch that however I want. Um, sometimes I don't want to stretch it like that. Sometimes I do want to like find some different areas in it and move it around. So I'm going to hit enter, and then you're going to be like, Mrs. Really, this looks awful. I'm going to go over here, and then I'm going to pick the overlay that works the best. I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to show you something. So remember, we need to do a mask. So we're going to come over here, and we're going to go like that. Now, I showed you that you can use a brush over top of it using one of the grunge that you downloaded, that you could do a brush over top of this to add different elements to that if you wanted to. Command Z undoes things. But what you can also do is a gradient overlay with that. So you can come over here to the gradient tool and you can, um, it should be defaulted as black and white. And you can do, you could pick any of these things. I'm just going to do the circular one. Then I'm going to pull that out. And right there it left that black because I had it reversed. So I'm going to hit undo and I'm going to unclick reverse here. I'm going to go like that again. And there, now that overlay is just applied to the outside area. Um, you can do that. You could brush, like I said, you could brush things on it. You don't necessarily have to brush out things. You can make those brushes um, look like stamps, and you could just do edges of things. You don't have to brush out. You can also change your direction of your brush right here. When you click on this now remember in order to select your brush you you click here and then you go in to the folder that you want so i'm in sparkle stock grunge brushes so i can pick whichever one i want and remember they're quite huge you can change the size of them like i really like the top of this brush um, more so than the bottom so if i wanted to use this on the top to create a border i would just rotate that around And then I can stamp that in. So now I've kind of created a border around this that's kind of interesting. Um, let's say I do want that all back in. I wanted to. I wanted that darker feel. I could go and I can just reset my brushes. Going all the way back to general brushes, I can just do a soft round brush, and that is huge. And um, so black erases and white rings brings back. So you see over here, there's a black and a white. I can just hit X and then that will bring up my um, white on top. And then I can hit X again and now I have black on top. So I could erase other areas as well. Let's bring in another overlay. So on my desktop, I have textures right here. 
And I really like this one by um, Jerry Jones that I got on Flickr. So I'm going to pull that in. I'm going to stretch this out. I want that border. So I want it to fit that perfectly. I'm going to hit enter. And then I'm going to pick one of these. Oh, that's interesting. I'm going to show you something else in just a second. There we go. We're going to do hard light. But if I shut this off, what does it do? Like maybe I don't really like that. Maybe I, I want to um, shut that off. I really like this image now better without that. I'm going to drag this. If I click on it and drag it up, now I can bring this to the top. And then I can erase things however I want it to look now. Some nice pop-ups here coming in. Forgot to put that to sleep. Erase too much of this out. Now I kind of have a really nice um, light source here. I can also remember tone this opacity down so it's not so bold. You can do that on this one as well. Sometimes I also duplicate, which is Command J, my background copy, and I might drag that in here and do some things with that as well. Ooh. So now I have a really completely different image than what I started with. Um, I have three layers. I have multiple things. I can add another one in if I want to. Let's add one of these coffee shop ones. As you can tell, I really like grungy things. This is really taking on a blue tint. So right now it went under here. I can click and drag that above if I want to. Below, I kind of like it like this. I'm going to switch. Ooh, that's interesting to say the least. Pen light's not bad. It's really not doing anything. There, I like that overlay. I can turn my layers on and off so I can see different things. Oh, yeah, I kind of like that. If I wanted to mask out areas, again, I can add a layer mask. I can use my brush. I can go in here. Now I want to do, um, I'm going to close this. I'm gonna, I have a lot of brushes. Um, I'm going to go all the way to the bottom because I know where that's at. And use the same brushes you use. Um, if you don't want this view, you, you can actually view brushes differently. You can come up here and um, you can or not. You used to be able to. Never mind. Ignore I said that completely. Um, If you click on the brush folder, this is brings this up and then it kind of tells us like different shape dynamics. You can go into brushes and you can look at them here as well if you want to. I don't ever really use that. Um, so you can also turn the opacity down in your brush so it's not so bold. So I could like brush over it like that if I wanted to. I didn't do anything. Oh, because white is up, hit X. So that just added a gray overtone to it. I don't want to do that. Um, a lot of times I use brushes kind of as stamps. I just click and go. Okay. So you kind of got to think like an artist. You got to think, oh, I want this brush stroke here. Or I want this sort of thing here, et cetera, et cetera. So now I have some different layers. I have some really nice things going on. I really like this. I don't want to screw with it. I'm going to come up here. Really look at my, oh, I got some fringe in here, but that's beyond. I have some really interesting things going on in here. Um, if you want to zoom in and zoom out, Command Plus and Command Minus zooms in and zooms out. Um, B will bring you to your brushes. X, remember, switches back and forth between your colors. If you don't have black and white up there, you can just hit D. That will default to your black and white. Um, remember to mess with opacity your overlays, your layer order. Command J will duplicate a layer. Just make sure you have it selected. Um, if you go back in to a layer mask, if you go back to a layer, you 
if you see these white brackets, that tells you what is selected. So right now my actual picture selected, not my layer mask. So if I were to paint right now, I'd just paint black. Um, but I'm going to come over here and now I can paint and I can do things. So make sure you're selecting your layer masks when you're painting on things. Um, that's very important as well. So you have to make this look amazing. And then we will, I'll have a hand in for you, um, to save things. Remember from your sky, um, when you're done, layer, flatten image. I'm going to go up to file, save as. For this one, I have a specific thing. I want you to name it your name, please. Um, that way you um, hand it in with your name. Uh, your Remember to switch it from Photoshop to JPEG and then type your name. And then I'm going to save this on my desktop along with 9 million other things. I'm going to hit save. Um, 12 maximum. It doesn't matter. You could do 10. Just don't do a small file, please. And then you press OK and you have your save. Once you have flattened it, um, you can't go back and edit things. If Let's say at the end of class, you want to come back and work on this. You want to save it as a PSD file because then it keeps all your layers and you can come back in and rework them. So typically when I'm working on something artistic, I save them twice. I save it as a JPEG, but I also go up and I save it as um, a Photoshop file just because um, I want to be able to come back and rework it. So I would save it as a Photoshop file as well. Um, and that is about it. Have a great rest of your day.